Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me. This is a familiar refrain, and today we're going to take that even deeper to discover what's the spiritual healing being called for, for us individually, for community, and for the world. And so uh, we've brought the, the quote from those first couple of lines, and we're citing Jill Jackson Miller and Cy Miller. Let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me. Uh, Wikipedia tells us that in 1955, Jill Jackson Miller wrote these lyrics coming out of spiritual discovery. She had been suicidal as a result of pain from an early marriage. And she wrote this song when she discovered the life-saving joy of God's unconditional peace and love. The life-saving joy of God's peace and unconditional love. A life-saving. You know, it's interesting because... Uh, let there be peace on earth is a familiar refrain in New Thought churches and uh, unities and other places throughout the world. It's country music, Christmas songs, it's children's choirs. I've been listening to a Mahalia Jackson version that's just very sweet. And I think um, no matter how you engage the song, the life-saving joy of God's peace calls us there's something in the lyric and the melody that sparks, just what Cerise sparked. Like, God makes us want to sing. Peace that is meant to be, it inspires us. And the idea that it can involve the world, and the world now that is facing pandemic, economic challenges, injustice, division, environmental and challenges and more from households to nations, that there's a peace there that's meant to be, that I am involved in bringing it forward, that's a call that I think each of us can hear. And so that's where we're headed. And uh, we'll look at three ideas. Who are we being? So what's the spiritual truth we must remember about ourselves? What are we believing, particularly around the healing power of our consciousness? And then what's the beginning? Where do we begin? What's the, the steps that we take? And I want to invite each of us to bring to this conversation a specific prayer request or issue or challenge that you really want to have more peace and have it extend. And for me, this just caught me in the last week or so, is Navajo Nation. Navajo Nation, less than 200,000 people, large geography, covers what we would call Arizona, Utah, New Mexico. And the rate of coronavirus infection and death in Navajo Nation is multiples of other cities and you know, around the world. And for some reason, you know, we all touch various things that just break the heart or catch the mind. And for some reason, that just, just got me. And so that's what I'm bringing. You know, and sometimes when a minister comes to share a message, um, it's all like completely locked down. I've been through the healing. I'm, you know, on the other side of it. Mom is in the middle of this. Like, so... It, it, that's what's up for me. So I invite you, whether it's a personal challenge, if there's been a layoff or a conflict or a problem in, or a health challenge in your own personal life, whether it's a community challenge or a world challenge, I invite you to bring something that's fresh and real into this conversation. Because what I know is our collective exploration of peace will make a difference. And so I, uh, I went to a kind of a fun source uh, in the last week for me. I went to the Science of Mind, and I went to Chapter 15. 
And chapter 15 of The Science of Mind is all about, it's all about physical perfection. So Ernest Holmes, the founder of The Science of Mind, wrote two chapters in what we call our textbook uh, on physical perfection. And chapter 15 is physical perfection concluded. So it's a chapter that covers everything from boils and bladder trouble, and believe me, you want prayers if those are things you're experiencing. He also talks about the consciousness of systems in the body, the heart, the lungs. And this chapter is the most uh, powerful stand for the healing power of our teaching. For the, and that's what really called to me. So we begin in this chapter with this idea about who are we being. So who are we being? With God as our power, loved ones all are we. With God as the power, who are we being? And so at the end of the chapter on physical perfection, this is what uh, Dr. Holmes writes. He says, we cannot be in peace until we know that the spirit is the only cause, medium, and effect in our lives. There is no past, present, and future to it. Evil has no history and has never entered into the being or the experience of reality. A treatment such as this will be of great service in acquainting the mind with the truth of its being. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Christ, the son of the living God within me. I am the principle of peace within me. I am the manifestation of love within me. My mind is poised in peace and beauty. All sense of fear or doubt is gone. And he goes on to say, I contend with none, argue with none, and am filled with wonderful peace and light. There is no uncertainty about my future, no fear as a result of my past. I am the Christ, the son of the living God within me. And that's true about me and about you. So each of us is the light. Each of us is the illumined truth of the divine revealed through our consciousness, through who we are. So we have the, the image of the light, and I think there's been a beautiful confluence here in the past few weeks of the messages. Last week, Reverend Karen Lewis spoke about light as God's inspiration, and she encouraged us to look for what lights up our spirit, what tunes in our heart and mind and energy, because that feeling sense of being lit up or delighted, that is a vibration that is an expression of a true infinite light. And Reverend Leslie Goodwin did a, a beautiful talk on Easter wholly reimagined. And many of you realize this is a season of Easter, Passover, Ramadan. The religious faith traditions are in many different forms of celebration, which all have the thematic of being in humanity, facing challenges, surrendering, and discovering and revealing and resurrecting the light. And one of the things that she said that just stuck with me is she called forth not just an external idea about the holy, but that we bring it on ourselves as spiritually and morally excellent. So those calls to be the light, the truth of being, that's us being the Christ. That's us remembering and living this idea of, of our call to reveal the presence of love, the power of God, the truth of our being. When we remember our spiritual reality, that it is not just something outside, but that it is who we are, there is something there where the Christ, the illumination spirit of the divine, wakens in us. We need that now. You need that now. 
I need that now. This is, I believe, the vibration we must be in to be able to do two things. One is, we have to be filled up enough spiritually so that we're in a state where we can then turn to the next call. We must remember who we are for the comfort, the security, the poise, and the peace. But it is not enough to only be comforted. We must, we must be about the healing, the revelation of this truth in everything. So that's where the next piece comes in. What are we believing? What are we believing? There are two big ideas in the science of mind. Love, God is all there is. And law, consciousness creates experience. And what I have caught for myself, which is why I'm not on the other side of this because I think it's a, a lifetime call, is that I have been resting in the comfort of spiritual practice and I must step forward into more responsibility for healing, for trusting that the principle of consciousness creates is not abstract, but it is mine to participate in. So what are we believing? And uh, we brought the science of mind teaching symbol here to, to remind us of this reality. Spirit, first cause, peace, unconditional love, freedom, supply, truth, beauty, spiritual qualities, eternal, infinite, unconditional, are acted upon, so this is why the, the arrow comes down from first cause spirit, through what we call law, soul, the action of life, acted upon by law to create humanity, to create experience, body, effect. The law is impersonal. The law says yes. Every time you hear, like practitioner Karen doing a, a treatment, you're always hearing the, we recognize God, we know we are one with it, we claim this presence of God in a specific situation, and that's an example of claiming the healing power. So what I found in chapter 15 that got me going here was reminders of things that I could have done fancy little talks on, but that I wasn't living in the way that I feel called to now. So the first is, is Dr. Holmes reminds us there is no incurable disease. So no dis-ease, and dis-ease is a form of separation or ignorance. It can show up like a virus. It can show up like injustice. It can show up like a, a fist fight. But dis-ease, there is no incurable disease. The law knows nothing about disease. It only acts. To spirit, there can be no incurable disease. The word incurable means not susceptible of being cured. The root definition of cured is cared for. If we say a disease is incurable, we are saying it is not sensitive to care. And so that's what I want. I, I just felt there is no thing that will not respond to the power of our practice, our prayer, our use of the law. It's also important to remember that there can be a healing without a uh, physical shift in a cure in the body. So many of us have experienced when a loved one leaves the body, we've experienced that um, they had a sense of healing or wholeness revealed in their spirit, even if the body is lost. We certainly have had that experience. And there's also a, a big call to not to understand that sometimes the form of healing is beyond what we can expect or understand or outline, but to really believe that everything can be healed is such a powerful place to be. And then he talks about treating lung trouble. 
And I felt this to be inspiring to me to think about the, the earth, the lungs, the bodies, the system. And he says, human life is the incarnation of God in humanity. With every indrawn breath, we breathe in life. And with every outgoing breath, we give it forth. The lungs are constantly renewed for every respiration. With every new inspiration of thought, we appropriate something of God. With every outpouring of life expressed in faith and good deeds, we are expressing God. When we associate our breathing with the very life and light of God, nothing can retard the flow of life through us. And I feel like that gives some beautiful guidance for how are we to be in prayer about the healing of virus into wholeness, is that we are a vitalization of the divine. So I invite you, if you have a prayer practice, to be even bolder than um, I would like peace of mind about a situation, but to be even bolder to say, I see the situation. We do not turn away. We see the fact, and we see through to the spiritual truth, and we pray knowing that the lungs of the planet, the health of our people, the economic well-being and justice for all, that these realities are undergirded by spiritual truth, which is strong, ever-present, and coming forward now. So that's how we pray. And where do we begin? So where, when, and how do we begin? You know, with every step I take, let this be my, is it solemn or joyous vow? So I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, just where do we start? <laughs> so I would think, you know, if there was ever team solemn or team joyous, I happen to be, I would say, the queen of team solemn. Certainly in my household, if anybody knows the big fella, he's like the king of Team Joyous, right? So as human beings, and I, I certainly on Team Solemn Val take this on, human minds, we have a tendency to, it's called negativity bias, we, you know, scan the environment and whatever's wrong, you know, that's what we tend to focus on. Reverend Karen Lewis did a wonderful example of that, like we see the thing that's wrong. Um, partly we do that because, you know, we want to, do a good threat assessment of the environment. Uh, human, human, human personalities, we like certainty. Now, certainty's always an illusion, but, but now it just seems like, what are you, who are you kidding? You know, it, like you can make up stories about when things will be like this and things will be like that, but it, it, it really is an illusion and we're just, you know, we got that right up there. And uh, there's a place for Team Solemn. You know, there's a place for, I am in prayer to know that every being in Navajo Nation is supplied with the essence of the divine, that the presence of God is there, that wisdom is there. I took my solemn vow, I tithed to Navajo Nation charities. It very, the, the right place to tithe came to me very easily. So the solemn has a strong value. And we need Team Joyous. So if we only stay in um, the solemnity of the moment, what we miss is the joy and delight of God, which has things we cannot expect that are better than what we could have planned for. So we'll begin. Um, I brought a picture and you can see that this is, um, you know, it's been quarantine. I could use a bang trim here, but this is me and the big fella. So last week he said, you know, let's, let's get out. And uh, so we very safely drove close to Globe to the Boyce Thompson Arboretum. And uh, you can buy a ticket and safely walk the beautiful Arboretum. It's been there since 1928. The trees, like there's so much wind in the trees, 
There's a human-made lake, which was like an oasis with all of these birds. And I felt just the beauty and the spaciousness and the, the joy of being out. And what I realized is that I was thinking, it's not okay for me to have too much joy and pleasure when so many people are suffering. And that just, you know, it just really touched me that, and I imagine that may be happening for you as well. Like, if you're holding back thinking, you know, I have so much privilege, I have so much supply, that I'm feeling like it wouldn't be good for me to have this much joy and pleasure. I invite you to, to reconfigure that. So, and it's interesting because Dr. Holmes writes, this is from this thing called you. You rob no person when you discover your own good. You steal from no one by being happy. You block no one's joy by entering into the goodness today. So I so understand, and then I felt in that moment, that for me to have moments of joy and pleasure makes me of more benefit to those I would help. This, is a, this appears, we don't know, but this appears that this is more of a marathon than a sprint in terms of our healing on the human level. And we need to be solemn in our vow and joyous in our potentiality. So I'm going to close with um, two other ideas about joy. <clears throat> One is, Reverend Karen Lewis brought it forward. She said, let the uncertainty delight you. So look for the moments where there's pleasure or happiness that you didn't expect. So this is look for the helpers, look for the kindness, look for the, the stories that uplift you, because what that shows is the light is present. And then the other moment of delight is, this is a, a beautiful orange from our wonderful Arizona citrus. So I think some of you know that uh, New Vision Center, we have some citrus angels, Charlie and Mark, who make sure that excess citrus will get delivered to your home if you, if you want and ask for it. And what I just heard is, where did they just do a big delivery that made a big difference? Navajo Nation. Look for the light. If we don't look for it, it's hard to bring it, and we need to now. So please join me in prayer. Let us pray about the peace. So I invite, if you are a practitioner or a minister of religious science, please rise wherever you are hearing this message and join me in affirming the truth. I recognize all of us are practitioners of peace. So all, please join me. If you want to soften an eye, please do so. Open the mind, the heart, and the spirit, and let us recognize that the peace and unconditional love of God is ever-present. It is eternal, creative, and whole. So I recognize right now that God's peace, love, truth, and joy flows and expresses through all. It is me, it is everyone in this beautiful sanctuary, the core team that is revealing this opportunity for us. It is every person who hears the message, and it is every beautiful being in every place and every heart on this planet and all beings, all peoples, all places included in this prayer. So what I claim and accept is that healing, the revelation of wholeness is upon us. That healing is circumstances changing because the spiritual truth is shown. I claim that healing is a shift in consciousness, choice, form, and action. For every one of us individually, we create safety in our environments. We call our leaders to decisions that are excellent, kind, loving, smart, and efficient. I claim that there is a revelation, a vibration of the Most High, and miraculous light-filled healing happens on all planes of existence. I believe healing is possible because I know God is good. 
And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that this prayer is an act of healing operated upon by law. So I give thanks for what is spoken here. I give thanks for the law that says yes, and I let it go. We know God is good here. We release, we let it be, we know all is well, and together we say, and so it is.